everyone figures it for you back again with another edition of what is on Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, and by the way, this Tuesday is my birthday, so feel free to send me gifts if you want. <laughs> Preferably decks I do not already own, which is a difficult one. <laughs> I'm sure. Anyways, let's get on with Kickstarter. No worry, you don't have to send me gifts, but if you want to, by all means. Uh, first of all, I believe we looked at the Ruby one last week. Ruby playing cards by JTrix is 6% fine at 21 days to go. Not going to happen. Not for $10,000 gold. Muertos Illuminados El Recurdo by Agitcon is well funded with 12 days to go. Pretty nice stack. Mostly just a recolor on the back design from the other variations, I believe. There could be some changes on the faces. I haven't been paying too much attention. I just. I know it belongs with the rest of the series that they released previously on Kickstarter. Um, anyways, it looks nice. Very nice. Then we got the Nastia point cards by Khalib Quintero. It's 4% front of 20 days to go. I am um, pretty sure I mentioned that one before. It's soccer themed. It's not doing too well and I don't think it's going to fund. Then there's Stellar Playing Cards by Cardinates. It is funded with 18 days to go. Not one that I find overly exciting, particularly. And then we have Angels of Burden by Gaiu Design. 3% funded, 34 days to go. I don't think it's going to happen. And I think I mentioned this last week, but looking at it, it leaves a bit to be desired. The indexes were not very user-friendly, and then the side of the tough case looks like it was pretty much copy and pasted from a Fury 11 tough case. It's great to be inspired by someone like Fury 11, but A, don't copy them completely, B, where's that inspiration in this project? <laughs> I don't really see it. Then we got the Lost Deer Forest playing cards by Bokobo, which is funded six days to go. Weirdest name for a deck of cards I think I've ever seen. Well, one of it's, it's up there anyways. I mean, Lost Deer Forest. Doesn't even make sense. <laughs> um, then there's the... Mm, I don't even facility that one last week. I might have. The Mardi Gras Masquerade uh, Point Cards. Masquerade Mardi Gras Edition Point Cards by Brain Vessel Creative. 58% funded, 21 days to go. Very nice, colorful deck of cards. If you got the original one, you definitely should be interested in this one. And I recommend checking it out. It's a nice, colorful deck. Little Sumo Wrestlers Playing Cards from Japan by the Soul West Choir. Why a choir is involved in a playing card project, I don't know. But this should probably stick to singing, based on what I'm seeing here. It's, uh, it's an interesting deck. It's unique. But... It's just weird. <laughs> it's 9% funded, 13 days to go. It is not going to happen. Clouded Paper by Elliot Slevin is funded, 11 days to go. Uh, if I recall correctly, every back is different, so it's essentially a marked deck, although it would be very difficult to try and memorize what each card is. Um, then there's the Green Dragon Point card, standard edition magic deck. How can it be standard and magic? By Craig Maidment, it is well funded though, although pretty little goal, I guess. With four days to go, and it was not my cup of tea. Moving on here Joker and Thief Street Edition from Joker and Thief is funded seven days to go. Uh, it's a nice deck, what can I say? Then there is the Mint 2 Luxury Playing Cards by 52 Cards, which launched last week just after I finished recording this video. So I added on another recording. Uh, it is blowing up. It is over 1,000% funded. And unlike some projects that are 1,000% funded, it did not have a $1 goal. <laughs> um, it is at almost $300,000 US funding wise. I think that's US. With 22 days to go, it is just through the roof. Now, there's one deck that's supposed to be limited, <laughs> a maximum of 12 per person. Well, it's not going to be that limited, <laughs> unfortunately. But he is planning to launch a ultra-limited deck of cards, 
which I think is a mistake because I think it's a logistical nightmare. How are you going to make sure that 3,000 people don't add this deck on to their pledges? It's just, it's going to be difficult. I don't know how he's going to pull this off. Um, moving on, we've got the playing cards stylized by Handmade, which is not even a, a name. It's a deck of cards that has no name by Christopher Romano, 2% funded for digital. It's not going to happen because people are not going to back a project based on two sketches of an ace and a two of uh, playing cards that are pretty unusable because they don't even have proper indexes uh, for one. And not to mention, we're not even really seeing what they're going to look like. And then there is Dark Wars of the Ship by Dan Hainsworth. It is funded 11 days to go very low, go low. Not my cup of tea. Oh my god. What is this? <laughs> Moving along. Um, Graveyard. Super creepy detailed deck of cards by Musketon. I'm pretty sure I sold you last week. I wasn't exactly a huge fan of it. 97% funded 18 days to go. It is going to fund. Um, It looks like he's changed the back design, if I'm correct. I don't know. Let's see if this loads up. Oh, look, there he is. A self-portrait. <laughs> That's not creepy at all. Um, custom pips. What the word? <laughs> um, so he's changed the back design into a mirror back design. Looks like it's a gold color. Before, it used to say graveyard down the middle, make it a one way. I think that's a bit of an improvement. And also, um, he has improved the indexes to make them playable, whereas before it was like just a letter, a number, or, you know, whatever. It was kind of weird. So I think he's improved it. Um, happy about that. Glad he has. Also, he looks like he's moved the index closer to the corner, whereas before it was like way in, if I recall correctly. And there's a foil print and a regular print, apparently, so... Yeah, so how how is he going to afford a foil print deck when he hasn't changed the goal? Or is that just going to be a stretch goal? Anyway, even though it's almost funded, I do appreciate that he's listened and made some changes, so that's great. Moving on, a Halloween deck by Swab Decks, which is still about... Three months too early for a Halloween deck. It is funded though, 21 days to go. Pretty little goal. I wasn't a huge fan, so I'm not really a fan. Um, then there's the Cardistry Ninjas. Wildberry, limited distance from Handlords. I think this one actually launched like last Sunday as well, right after I did the video. So we'll look at that in a bit. Starry Sky by X Zone is funded, 10 days to go. Pretty well funded, actually, for what it is. Don't understand that. <laughs> really not my cup of tea. It's like they took a, a painting and they chopped it up into 52 playing cards. <laughs> I mean, it's okay for what it is, but it's not my cup of tea. Then we got the Kelly Gang playing cards by Pierre Huter. It is 88% funded, 10 days to go. It should fund at this rate. It's an interesting idea. And something you don't see very often on playing cards, which is Australian history. Um, then there's Antique Playing Cards by Antique Playing Cards. 81% funded, 10 days to go, looking like that one's going to fund as well. Not really my cup of tea either, but it's a cardistry deck for anyone who likes cardistry decks. Um, then there is the Vampirotica. Blood of God, Playing Cards by Vampirotica. It is well funded because... Like a one dollar goal, or no, ninety nine dollar goal. Actually, ninety nine dollar goal. That's when you know you're getting a great product when it has a goal that can fund like that. <laughs> um, six days to go. Definitely not my cup of tea. I, we looked at that one last week a little bit. And then there's the Lost Spirit Point Cards by Triangle Point Cards. This really tells me nothing about the deck, but we looked at it. It is funded. Seven days to go. Get down, party. <laughs> All right, let's go back. And look at what is new. 
We got the Diamond Point Guards number 8. I don't understand that. By Diamond Point Guards, 24% funded. 24 days to go. It's got it's got a chance of funding. It's a fund in the end. This is like their third project, so why it's number 8, I don't know. And here, case in point, free created. And the last one, I think, was number 4. Um, 100% custom. Dutch designed. Oh, good. <laughs> and made by USB-C. And it looks like a bunch of other very similar cardistry decks. It's an interesting color scheme. This one is the third installment. So, like I said, why is it number eight? So, I don't know. <laughs> um, lollipop pink to seaweed green colors. I only done like a winter deck, and this I don't know. Is this supposed to be a spring deck, a summer deck? Interesting. Colorful phase is not a huge fan of the court cards. It's just a bunch of shapes. Um. But it is what it is, if you like it, by all means, check it out. They so far have been a reliable creator. Yeah, number two, number five, and number eight. You can get all three pro decks in this project, and they're all basically the same, except they've moved around the diamonds to different sections of the cards and different colors. <laughs> so it's like a recolor that's been modified slightly. Anyways, it's just ever so exciting. Um, I can't see American backers being excited about having to pay five euros for shipping, but it is what it is. Uh, then we got the Pride of Peacocks by Arcadia Point Cards. I look at the tuck case, it says Arcadia. To me, it sounds like it's the Arcadia deck, not Pride of Peacock. But anyways... Um, it is 14% funded, 31 days to go, uh, whether or not it makes it is anyone's guess at the moment. It is a very nice back design, as you see there on the top, there's lots of line work, some peacock details in there, and of course on the front of the box, but it's still pretty far from that goal of 9,500 pounds, which is somewhere around, what is that, $14,000 US, I'm guessing. Uh, to be printed by Carter Mundi. A lot of people are using Carter Mundi nowadays, so that's good. Uh, like I said, nice tuck case. I don't know if it's going to be... Does it say if it's foil? Yes. Gold and white foil tuck case. Custom faces and tips with peacock deal details based on the classic point card design. Gold metallic ink on the backs and fronts. Custom stamp seal. Um, but it is a bit pricey. Uh, 11 pounds for one deck, which is about $19 Canadian, so I'm guessing around 15 bucks US. I guess it's not horrible, but then you factor in shipping and it becomes a little bit more expensive. I know there was some concern about the price on the form, at least, when I first came across this. Back design, like I said, very nicely detailed. Do believe it's mirror image. It should be, anyways. Um, full bleed, basically, with the blue borders. Or flawless results in fanning. Personally, I think the borders, white borders, would have been better because faces are white. And this way, there's just going to be chipping. I, however, that being said, not, I don't have a whole lot of experience with full bleed backs on Carter Mude, so maybe I'll be okay. I don't know. The faces leave a little bit to be desired. It's supposed to be um, inspired by peacocks and by where did I see that? Persian and Indian culture, and, and you get to the faces, and they're basically standard recolored faces. I guess they do have some peacock feathers in their hands, some of them anyways, and obviously the Ace of Spades is a peacock. I don't really see the peacock details in the pips, 
like I was expecting to see, and and then the Jokers or Peacocks. Um, it's a nice deck. I would be nice if they actually had more of the theme within it, but it is what it is. It's pretty cool. Um, then we have. Pretty sure I started the, started the Mardi Gras one last week, where I obviously looked at the Mint 2 last week. By the way, the Mint Cucumber deck has been unlocked. I'm pretty sure it was unlocked like 30 minutes after the project funded and had like $100,000. Because it was just ridiculous how fast you got that much money. But um, yeah, the Cucumber, the green one, has been unlocked. So there's three decks available in this project. A green one, a blue one, and a kind of a mixed color one. Which I've kind of showed you last week, but we'll look at that again just quickly. It's definitely a nice deck of cards. I wouldn't want to fulfill that project. <laughs> I mean, they're going to get the 5,000 backers in no time. I would not want to deal with 5,000 packages. <laughs> uh, I mean, they may get to 5,000 at this rate. There you go. There's three decks. Blueberry Mint in blue. Nice blue. Cucumber Mint in a green, and then this other one, which is kind of a dark blue and a light blue. Yes, is a uh, Frost Mint, which is supposed to be limited, but if you got 4,000 backers and each one adds at least one on, that's 4,000 decks. And I'm wagering that some are adding on the max 12 decks, probably more than a few, <laughs> and others are getting you no know, 6 or 2 or whatever, so... There's going to be like 10,000 of those, I, I would have to guess. So it's not exactly limited. <laughs> um, anyways, it's a gorgeous deck of cards, though. Obviously very popular and definitely worth checking out. Printed by USB-C. Modified faces, as you can see. There's the uh, Kickstarter exclusive Frost Mint. Max of 12 per backer. But again, you got 4,000 backers. <laughs> so it's not that limited anymore. Cucumber Mint, there you go, the green. It's pretty cool. I like the colors. Nice different colors. Obviously, previously they've done blue and black. Or, sorry, red and black with the raspberry mint and the regular mint. And there was kind of a black gold. All right. Moving on, we got the Cubic Point Cards by Suffield. Suffield, I don't even know. I'm probably butchering that pronunciation. It's 50 cent percent fun. The 28 days to go. It may make it at this rate. It probably will. Uh, it is a one-way back design. It's a Rubik's Cube that's been chopped up and put onto a back design. Not the first time we've seen a Rubik Rubik's Cube deck of cards on Kickstarter. Um, faces? Uh, that's kind of an interesting... Actually, no, I don't like that at all. What I see here, it's an Ace of Hearts, but what I see... Is a diamond. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't like that. The diamonds look good. Uh, I like. Uh, I don't know. I don't like this all that much. It's standard court cards that have been stripped of the colors and then they added all these little cube details and colors on them. Also, if you look at the uh, pips, one index is a solid color. This one's red. The heart over here is spade, so it's blue, but the opposite corner, it's multiple colors. So it's kind of a one-way face, essentially. Actually, it's more than that. I mean, you look at the colors on the on the court card itself, it's also one way. I don't know, it's kind of interesting, but it's kind of weird. Designed for cardistry and creativity, I guess I can see that. They've made it a one way back intentionally, which most people try to avoid. That, you know, kind of looks interesting. So, yeah, I don't like those aces at all. What I'm seeing basically is diamonds. That's it. I don't see a spade pip or a heart or a club. I see diamonds. Horrible, horrible aces in my opinion. I do like that each suit has its own unique color. That helps. But I don't like those aces at all. 
Um, and those are basically custom pips, I guess. No, those are just the, just the aces have those custom pips. And again, not a huge fan. But it is what it is. It's an interesting one-way back design. And you can see what it looks like when you mix them up reversed. Hmm. Although, I'm not sure how I got the white color in this corner when the corners are clearly like red and orange and yellow. How is there a white in some of these corners? That's kind of weird. Hmm. Oh, I see. There's white in these corners, so... This is just like a special back design. I don't I don't understand. <laughs> Anyways, um it's pretty interesting. Also the faces, they got multiple colors on them. Not really digging that too much. Keep it one solid color. That would be better. Um But yeah, I get what he's doing with the colors on the face that you can see. It's interesting, but uh I don't know. And I, I don't know if Carter's is really if Carter's would really like that all that much, but I guess, I suppose they would. Um, should be able to get them later on if I had a major issue, so that's probably what I'll do, if anything. Moving on. Moving on. We got the TNY 2.0 Mini Travel Deck by Kabuki Babuski. It is funded 10 days to go. This is the Tiny 2.0. It's a micro plastic waterproof deck of cards. I was not a fan of the original and this just looks like more of the same. The back design I guess is different. In this one they've also added corner pips which I guess they didn't have originally which is great. Also even more bend. It's a plastic deck of cards. How much more bend do you need? <laughs> uh, waterproof for travel, what areas, pools. Let's go play poker in the pool. With a mini deck that we might lose in the freaking water things. <laughs> the, the, you know what I mean, like the, the water sucking things. <laughs> anyway, um, I like that they've added the indexes. Don't know why the diamond has a through it, but, um, same with the, well, I guess the queen of clubs, uh, the, the queen index kind of makes sense, but, yeah, not really my cup of tea, it's just too tiny, from what I can tell. Maybe it is just a mini-sized deck. Nope, it's even small. Actually, no. This now is just a mini deck before it was teeny. So now it's just a standard mini deck, so that's kind of good. So they've made it bigger. They've added indexes. It would be nice if it was a four-color deck, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, but it's still not that exciting. But, by all means, if you like it, check it out. What is it? $15 for one TV deck? Are you kidding me? Pass. <laughs> um, let's see what else there is here. There was at least one more. We talked about, we looked at Graveyard. Cardassi Ninjas, I don't think we've looked at that yet, so we will. The Wild Berry, nice purple color. It's like the bubblegum deck. <laughs> uh, basically, it's more the same, except that it's this bright purple color. So, if you like it, by all means, check it out. If you don't like it, <laughs> um, I don't think they really care. They're, they're funded already, they're doing well, they got a lot of support, they got a good fan base. So his deck's easily fun in no time. Uh, but I like it myself, and obviously a, a review will be coming. That's interesting how you can link all the cards together with the corners. That's kind of cool. But yeah, it's just typical deck. It's like four-way fanning and stuff like that. Um, moving on. got the secret mini EDC point cards by NBA. It is 39% funded, 25 days to go. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, mini EDC, or why it's a secret. But, oh, let's look at it. The back design is a horrible one-way back design. The aces, they have no pips. 
So you have to identify them by the index only, which I really don't like. It's a very small goal. 10,000, what? How can that be possible? $10,000 Hong Kong is $1,600 Canadian. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, maybe the dollar went down drastically recently. I don't know. Uh, the Joker is kind of interesting. Why is it these back designs have a image on them, a dragon or whatever? But here, there's nothing. Nothing. Basically, standard number cards. It's not very big. It's like a narrow poker size. It's not, it's not even bridge size. It's weird. It's <laughs> Is what it is. So yeah, it's different dragons on the aces. And now we got dragons on the back designs again. Basically standard number cards. Don't like the tens. Why is there a massive gap in there? Just use the space for, for, for goodness sake. You know, there's no reason to have this massive gap in there. And have all the pips clumped up in the top or the bottom. Court cards. I don't like the aces except with an additional pip. It's just some kind of a dragon thing. Um, yeah, I'm just not really feeling this one. I'm not really liking it. 4.4 centimeters tells me nothing. Come on. Come on. So it's three, almost three and a half inches tall, and almost two inches wide. So it's like a—it's not even a bridge size deck. I don't even—I don't know why you would want this. Quite frankly, it's just a weird size. Not my cup of tea. How much is this thing, anyways? Sixteen dollars Canadian for one deck. Are you kidding me? You can keep that secret. <laughs> um, let's see what else there is. If there's anything I don't recall. Oh yes, there is one more here. The Project Subtle playing cards by Project Shuffle. It is fifty percent funded. Twenty eight days to go. That is one that is being produced by Carter Moon. They have seen it on Instagram. It should fund, I suppose. Uh, I'm not really like it. The back design is okay. It's apparently designed by uh, Tomas Pinston. So now he's using Cardinal Moon Day 2, I guess. Support Aussie Cardistry. No, I don't think I will. Minimum 350 decks to be produced. Um, I mean, I like the pips. I don't like the color or sort of lack thereof. There's one pip that has like color in it, the rest don't have any color. And then you look at the faces, you look at the indexes, they're all the same color. So that doesn't really make it very user friendly when all the indexes are the same color and it's kind of difficult to determine what's a heart, what's a spade, or what's a club. You have to kind of, I'm, I'm not a fan of it. I like to be able to identify if it's a black suit or a red suit. Or if it's, you know, hard or diamond, or et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's something that's also good for, obviously, for magic and for playing cards. Obviously, it's more for card history, so they don't care. Um, the faces are very minimalist. They remind us of decks that... They remind me kind of of the uh, newer, what is it, Bicycle Ghost from Illusionist, and also perhaps some other play decks where... Just very minimalist court guards. Lack of color. I'm just not a fan. Also, all these cubes seem kind of unnecessary. <laughs> just little details added for nothing. And I really, really dislike this tuck case because it doesn't tell you what it is. For the love of God. When you're designing a deck of cards, put the name on the front of the tuck case so we know what it is. Advertise it. <laughs> That's your biggest advertisement for a deck of cards is the tuck case. And if it doesn't tell you what it is on the front, 
people don't know and they're not going to look at it. <laughs> that being said, it is kind of a weird name, Project Subtle. And I get it, they're going for subtlety. But it's not my cup of tea. Moving on, is there anything else here? Oh, there was one more. I believe this is a relaunch. It's Lodge Traveling Carnival Playing Cards by Terry Dull. 22% funded, 37 days to go. May or may not make it at this rate, who knows. Um, oh good, it's got the little hangy thing for the stores, that's nice. <laughs> I think you wanted to run out and buy it. I do believe this is a relaunch. No, actually this is still the same project. It's still chugging along very slowly, and who knows if it's going to make it. So, we kind of looked at that before. It wasn't a fan. Um, ooh. <laughs> Jackson Robinson, his five stack chip stacking game of strategy and chance, which of course has a deck of cards, which you cannot just get individually. You have to get the game and add on a deck or buy the game with the deck here for 45 bucks. And it makes a nice looking deck of cards, I guess, for what it is. But it's not helping this project out. This is the second time he's done this project, and the second time it has failed. It will fail unless he decides to plug seven thousand dollars into it. But I don't think, don't think it's going to happen. Either he has a really high goal, fifteen thousand dollars. I don't know if that's high for a game plus a deck of cards. Perhaps it's not. He's got a bunch of backers, but he's just not. It's not funding, <laughs> for some reason. And, uh, one more thing I wanted to mention very quickly. And that is this project. The Sealy Playing Cards by Darren Gendron. Which was funded, by the way, July 13th, 2013. Five years ago. Five. And yes, I am a backer. And... Uh, posted some updates in 2013. A couple. But not much. Then in 2014, apparently he had appendicitis, which is fine. It's an excuse. It, it was another update on his health, blah, blah. Um... In April, apparently he was still dealing with appendicitis issues. I don't know if it really takes two months to overcome appendicitis. <laughs> um, still no progress at the end of 2014. Then there apparently there was issues with time and money in 2015. And then there was no updates from January 2015 until now. He finally posted an update, says soon is, but he still does not have the money to produce this stuff. He doesn't know if he will. Um, wonderful surprise. <laughs> I never got an email though about the update for some reason. Um, Oh, good. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, it's very shocking to see this one have an update five years later. Um, who knows? Somebody said on my Facebook group, we might get the decks in the next two years. <laughs> this week. Um, it's not the most exciting deck of cards. I kind of would just prefer a refund. Uh, well, it's kind of interesting, but that is that. Stay tuned for more what's on deck. Comment, rate, subscribe. I gotta go turn up the oven. We'll see you next time with more 